hope in this crazy season. What's up, football fans? Yes, you're in the right place. This is FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. We're rolling into week two, breaking down and betting every single game. Plus, dropping DFS tips right Yeah, I'm Lisa Kearney with my team here in Los Angeles studio. You know our sports betting expert, Dave Weaver, hey. here. You also know this guy right here making his first start for us. Oh, man. Former NFL wide receiver, nine-year vet, Super Bowl champ. Give it up. Thank James you. James Jones joining yeah. the show. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all for having me. Psyched Thank to have you. you. Oh, You're yeah. going to be here with us all season. All season is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot Absolutely. of fun. It's going to be a fast and fun season right here. Got to get the rest of the team in here. <laughs> Bring in the boxes. <laughs> Always. <laughs> What's up, all? Sports Talk radio host Andrew Filipponi in Pittsburgh. Now the face of Marquee Sports Network in Chicago. Our NFL analyst, Cole Wright. These two work together. So James and Cole, yeah. you guys got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, all right, you guys. Let's roll and get week two underway. <laughs> All right, before we get to our experts here, got to make sure you're prepped to place your bets. Now's the time to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app so you can make your bets right from your phone. Let's get to it, everybody. And as a special thank you, FanDuel is giving new customers up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Woo! Yes! Ooh. New users can take advantage of the no sweat first bet. How? Well, just place a cash bet with the FanDuel Sportsbook. If you don't win, you're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets. It's that easy. It's week two, and we're going to kick this thing off. First game on our slate, everybody. Cincinnati at Dallas. Lots of storylines in this one. Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow, five turnovers, sacked seven times, and since he's lost to Pittsburgh. And the biggest storyline in this one, Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott out with that thumb injury. Cooper Rush in to make just <laughs> his second career start. Uh, James, we're starting off our brand new spanking new yeah. segment here. It is called <laughs> Been there, done that. Because mm -hmm. you've been there, done that. Played in the league nine years as a wide receiver. You've played with these backup quarterbacks. What's this like coming into this thing with Been with there, Rush? done that, right? I've been in there with Seneca Wallace, Scott Tozine, Matt Flynn. They are not AR-12. They are not Aaron Rodgers. And Cooper Rush is not Dak Prescott, and you shouldn't expect him to be Dak Prescott. But Cooper Rush is going to be just fine. This is a guy that played in this system for a very long time, got a start under his belt, beat the Minnesota Vikings. So I think he will come out and play really well. I don't think the Cowboys are in the situation I was in with Seneca Wallace and Scott Tozin. I think Cooper Rush will play well, but it's going to be difficult for the Cowboys. Seneca Wallace, a diamond in Seattle. Yeah. All right, throwback there. All right, we're going to get your pick in just a moment, but let's take get to our betting experts here. Dave Pony, you guys are up. Cowboys now getting seven and a half at home. Dave, you first. How you bet it? Yeah, I mean, first of all, Pony, James doesn't know what he's in for here with us clowns on this show, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a good year now that he's aboard. Look, look we, we learned this five years ago when John Sheeran, the director of trader for the Fendel Sportsbook, told us quarterbacks are not that important to the line. So why is this line seven and a half? It's way too big for me. Cooper Rush has never lost. He's undefeated as an NFL quarterback. Ooh, James pointed out. He's 1-0. I mean, but in that game against the Vikings pony last year, he put up 325 yards, two scores. And this is what I told you last week when they played the Steelers. Who are the Cincinnati Bengals to be favored by touchdowns against teams in this league? It's not – that's not who the Bengals are. I like the, I like the Cowboys. Mm. Well, I'd also like to extend a welcome to uh, James Jones, but I do – PTSD thinking back to Super Bowl 45 when I see him. So that's not a great start to my morning. Look, uh, the one part of the Cowboys loss to the Buccaneers that has gone largely ignored is that their defense for the most part played well. They held Tom Brady to 212 yards. Tampa Bay only scored one touchdown in that game and had to settle for a lot of field goals. So you're telling me that the spread is more than a touchdown? All the Cowboys have to do is keep it close, and you guys just nailed it with how Cooper Rush was a good game manager in his one start last year. I'm going to take them as well, plus seven and a half. All right, James is sitting here kind of shaking wow. his head. Mm. He likes uh, us. What do you think about their picks? What's your pick? You know what, man? I, I'm proud of you guys, man. Yeah. Jerry Jones will be happy. Jerry Jones has to be watching this show right now. Jerry Jones will be very happy because I'm with you guys. I am taking the Cowboys. I am a believer. 
for this week in Cooper Rush. I think he is going to play really well. And you spoke on it. That defense played lights out. They held Tom Brady to field goals every time they got in the red zone. Seven sacks for this Cincinnati defense last week. And we all know who 1-1 is over there. And Michael Parsons is about to come after JoJo Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. I like the Cowboys in this That's right. And we were just saying here at this table before the show started, they can't start 0-2, no, especially at no. home. All right, we're moving on. we got to get to the Dolphins at the Ravens here. Miami's D absolutely balled out last week. A touchdown, interception, forced fumble in that 20-7 win over New England. Start of the season on fire when everyone's eyes were on that offense, right? We'll see what they get done against the Ravens this week. Baltimore took an easy W over the Jets. Lamar Jackson, three touchdowns, 24-9 win. Looked ahead to Miami saying they have, quote, more answers for the Dolphins blitz this year. The Dolphins who blitzed more than anyone last year. Of course, the big story is uh, Jackson in the final year of his contract. He has not signed that extension. Waiting for that fully guaranteed money. We've seen precedent here. Uh, James, you've been there, done yeah. that, playing the last year of a contract. Um, talk about the balance of the mentality while also trying to go out and, and ball out and stay healthy at the same yeah, time. Yeah, been there, done that. Not for Lamar Jackson money, though. You know, I wasn't looking at that money. But listen, that's exactly what you want to do. When they don't give you your contract extension, you want to say, every time I take this field, you know what, Ravens? price goes up. Every time you see me take this field, price goes up. That's what you want to do. You want to just go out there. You want to ball. So then at the end of the season, you come up there and you say, this was the price, but the price has went up. And they better hope that Lamar Jackson does not get to this Super Bowl because then the price is really going to go up. But that's exactly what you want to let the organization know. I ain't going to bother y'all right now, but every time I take the field, I'm going to prepare and the price is going to go up. I know the paper said $250 million. <laughs> I need that to have a big G you under know? it. Guaranteed. Uh, all right, James. You're picking uh, just a second, but this time I want to get Dave and Cole's takes here. Ravens, a three and a half yeah. point home favorite. Cole, you first. Well, we know Miami got that win over that broke down Patriots squad, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if James is watching that, but uh, we're going to get back to uh, James and I'll pitch your time in just a little bit. But uh, <laughs> if anyone saw that win coming from Miami, then uh, I got some land in, in Miami that you may want to buy. But Lightning's not going to strike twice for these Dolphins because Mike McDaniel's run game absolutely abysmal not one running back over 25 yards in week one chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert 17 carries for 41 yards now the Ravens third ranked defense versus Miami's 30th ranked rush offense I, I like the way that should shake out and uh, oh by the way the Ravens also have the third ranked rushing offense so uh, they're also going to be looking for a little bit of payback you know with retribution on the line Miami, they won the last meeting. So Ravens, they make it look easy here, Weaver. 27-14. Yeah, man. they won last year. But remember, that was a Thursday night game, and the Ravens had gone into overtime the prior Sunday. They were banged up. But throw that game out. The three times prior, uh, John Harbaugh and the Ravens beat the Cow uh, beat the Dolphins 59-10, 40-0, uh. and 38-6. to he's, he's, not, he's not just beating the Dolphins. Why? The Ravens yeah. are smashing the Dolphins, and I think this line is too small Ooh. at 3 and a half. Are they going to win by 40 again? Mm. Maybe not. And it doesn't Period. matter if, if it's Lamar. He's yeah. done that with Flacco, Schaub, RG3, you know, whatever quarterback. Yeah. And it's great that he does have Lamar, but yeah. he just owns his team. I like that confidence. Mm -hmm. eight, Harbaugh 8-1 eight and one against, against the spread, spread. On, against the Dolphins. Okay, who do you Ooh. like in this one and by how many points? Well, number one, I am never going against Lamar Action Jackson. That's just not <laughs> happening. I'm not going against Lamar. And then he's starting to pass this ball down the football field, make explosive plays with his arms. I understand what the Dolphins have done. I understand who they brought over. I'm a big fan of Tyreek Hill. But Lamar Action Jackson and these Baltimore Ravens are out this season for get back. Banged up by the injury bug. I like the Baltimore Ravens in this one. I'm like Cole. I think this one is not going to be close. I think this is going to be a beat down by the Baltimore Ravens. Let Miami know that we we are the big dogs in this AFC. I like the Ravens in this one, 28-10. And, you know, in real time, you see our, our ticker there. Uh, from three and a half to now four and a half. So uh, that is what we have ahead of us there in uh, Baltimore. All right, let's move on here. A great matchup ahead oh, for us in Philly. And I know James is excited about this one. Eagles hosting the Vikings after both teams absolutely showed up offensively in week one. Philly won 38-35 in Detroit with that newly added wide receiver, A.J. Brown. We'll talk about him a little bit. Ten receptions, 155 yards. Mm. On the other side, Minnesota beat Green Bay 23-7. Justin Jefferson balling out, 
nine catches, 184 yards, and two touchdowns. Fantasy players are saying they're going, yes, we got ours. Uh, James Jones, you've been there, done that. 11 catches. I want to get your stats right. 178 yards in week one. That was 2013 <laughs> season. I mean, yeah. baller, a, what's a game like that feel like, and how do you pull that momentum then to the next week? Well, number one, you break in the huddle like I'm getting the ball every play. And then the next thing that goes through your mind is, I can't be stopped out here. They cannot stop me. No matter what they do, they cannot stop me. I'm that dude. Aaron Rodgers is going to find me no matter what. Obviously, it was Kirk Cousins finding Justin Jefferson. Let me tell you something, people. If you don't already know, Justin Jefferson is easily the second best receiver in football behind Devontae Adams, and he is on Devontae Adams' heel. But when you are having a game like that, you just feel unstoppable. You get in the huddle. Don't even worry about the play call. You get that eye contact with Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers. Hey, just spin it over here. It's just it's a it's a great zone to be in. Yeah, now I'm gonna make your day easy. Just <laughs> you got me right here. All right, thanks, James. Uh, again, I'll get your pick in just a sec. Cole and Pony Vikings, a one and a half point road dog. Cole, who do you like here? You know, the fighting Kevin O'Connell's, as we saw, they caught a Aaron slipping uh, off that ayahuasca <laughs> hangover. I, I don't know if we were allowed to address that, but we just did. Now the key component is going to be. That solid defense and Cousins to Jefferson, like James said, are just incredible. Nine snags, 184 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. Are you serious? He, he was real serious, but don't expect that Philly defense to be cooperative this time around. Now, they did allow 181 rushing yards to Detroit, but they limited all line wideouts to 64 yards or less. So expect Jalen Hurts to find that first passing touchdown of the year. Who knows? Maybe a second, maybe his third. The Eagles, they're going to fly in this one. Four point win, 24 20 count. Well, uh, this is going to be a totally different matchup for Minnesota. You know, they were able against Green Bay to take advantage of two things. Packers, two offensive tackles were out for that game. And there's no, no number one wide receiver. James Jones ain't walking through that door. It's Randall Cobb and Sammy Watkins. And now here comes A.J. Brown. What a debut for him. Ten catches, uh, 150 yards. And I heard Joe Thomas say Wednesday on FanDuel TV, he thinks the Eagles have the best offensive line in the entire NFL. So night and day contrast from what the Vikes saw in week one. Philly's going to win this game going away. I like an alternate spread in this game, Lisa. By the lineup, the Eagles are going to win by more than a touchdown. I like that. I like that. I was going to say, though, I'm here next to James. He could actually walk through the door and go ahead and help those guys out. All right. Thank you so much, James. Which team wins and by how many points? Oh, man. Come on. Come on, fly, there Eagles fly. Listen, the Eagles might be the best team in the NFC. And you guys know, I mean, I, I bleed a little green. You know, I got Packers in my blood. But the Eagles are problems for anybody in the National Football League. The way they can run the football, you spoke on the best offensive line in football. You got one of the baddest mans on the planet in A.J. Brown. Their offense is crazy. Jalen Hurts is playing at a high level. I like the Philadelphia Eagles in this one by 10. I'm going to say it's going to be... 24 to 17. Oh, he just made some friends on the show. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, James, thank you so much. Side note here for you, while you're making it rain with your bets, don't forget you can also win part of a $10,000 prize pool just by answering a few questions about the games this week. GMC is teaming up with FanDuel for a free-to-play GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest. All you have to do is log on to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash GMC Mountain Climber before the early games kick off on Sunday. Answer the questions about the NFL matchups. The more answers you get right, the higher you move up the mountain. Fans who get every answer right will reach the summit and win a share of the $10,000 prize pool paid in site credit. So make sure to enter the free GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest. If you don't win this week, it's all good. You know we have your back. You can enter every Every week of the NFL season to win a share of the $10,000 prize pool. Have fun and good luck. Wins upon wins upon wins on this show, including our brand spanking new segment, Pretty Psyched to have rolled out. Been there, done that with our very new teammate here, James Jones. Uh, that's the inside scoop right there, and we are just getting started. Plenty more to come here on FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win, including upset picks, yep, Moneyline Moneymakers coming in hot, and we're revealing the best value DFS plays for week two. Stick around, we're coming right back. 
You know the drill. You watch, you wager, you win. It's what we do. Thanks for hanging with us as we break down week two here on FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. And we're done playing nice, okay? <laughs> it's time to upset some fan bases, dump some trash talk on top. You guys ready to do this? Let's it is time yeah. for Bet Moji's Moneyline Moneymaker Style. Cole, you're on the hot seat first. All right. right. I want you to give me an upset special, an underdog that is going to win outright here in week two. But now here's the fun part because these guys have their paddles ready. After <laughs> your pick these guys are going to yeah. upgrade you are going to grade yeah. your pick uh, using the emoji all the cool kids <laughs> are doing it here cole uh better make it good give us your upset pick here for week two at least i'm not going to make it good i'm gonna make it great because pony and weaver they know how i roll james <laughs> i'm gonna let you know because jared goff in detroit they had a semi-balanced game plan versus philly last week but a uh, week one that was detroit's first non-thanksgiving sellout Post 2018, that's not great. And that Washington 21st passing offense, they're going to see an uptick with Carson Wentz because he's going to look to limit some of those turnovers. Four touchdowns a week ago, but uh, two interceptions, not going to get it done, especially versus Jacksonville. So look for a huge output from Terry McLaurin and more from Jahan Dotson, the rookie out of Penn State, showing a whole bunch of promise. Commanders, and they cruise in this one 23 to 17. What say you guys? All right, he likes the commanders, plus 110 there. Mm. To win it outright, oh. go ahead. I like it. How are we feeling about that? I like it. Ah! Tony, you're laughing at me. I was going to give you that, but I'm going to give you this one right here. I was going to give you this. I, uh, the reason why, are here. you a believer in Carson Wentz? Is that what you're telling us right now? I'm not necessarily a believer in Carson Wentz. I'm just not a believer in Detroit. We, we, we've seen Detroit. It's not too far from Chicago. It's about a four-hour drive. I, I'm not going to fall for that banana in the tailpipe, guys. Don't, don't, take, don't take the cheese on Carson, man. <laughs> all right. Uh, you all at home can take Cole's advice. Make your own picks on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. New customers, you will get up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Make sure you take advantage of our no sweat first bet. New users, get on it. Be sure to take advantage of this here by placing a cash bet on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. If you don't win, we've got your back. You're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets. It's that easy. 1000 bucks coming right back to you if you are not successful with your bet. Time now to talk MVP awards. Most valuable player. Now, guys, uh, give me your pick last week, but I'm going to give them an MVP mulligan, if you will. If you want to take advantage of it this week, pick a new guy after we saw the week one games. Mind blown, by the way. Guys, uh, I want you to tell me if you're taking advantage of this generous mulligan and picking a new guy or riding with your pick from last week. And Dave, I'm going to have you on the hot seat first. Well, I I'm going to switch. You know, Justin Herbert is my guy but his odds are just too low. They've dropped, so I'm looking at uh, Kirk Cousins at plus 2,500. Look, he, him and Jefferson are going to be insane Ooh. all year. If Adam Thielen can get back to Adam Thielen and Irv Smith lives up to his potential and Kirk Cousins has a year I think he's going to have and they win that division over the Packers, yes, uh, I think he has to be considered and that's too big of a price, so Ooh. give me Kirk Cousins. The Kirk Cousins MVP train. Well, listen, last year, everybody overreact when my dog AR12 Aaron Rodgers goes out to Jacksonville and gets beat down by the New Orleans Saints. They don't even put up a touchdown in that game. I think they had three points. So he's off to a little better start this year. Listen, you never go against the baddest man on the planet in Aaron Rodgers. He's going to bounce back. He's going to bounce back big. He's going to put up big time numbers. And he doesn't even have a bona fide number one wide receiver. AR-12 is going to host up his fifth MVP award at the end of this season. Mm, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Jefferson. I think Justin Jefferson here. Look, last year Cooper Cup got one MVP vote. We talk all the time about how it's only a quarterback award, but I think in this case, Dave, working against you, is that people don't think Kirk Cousins is very good. So unlike most quarterback wide receiver <laughs> connections, if they put up great numbers and win, I think the narrative is going to be that Justin Jefferson made C Kirk Cousins and not the other way around. So I love that at 75 to 1. Oh, Pony, me and you going to have a good relationship, man. You done picked the receiver, man. We're on a good, we, we, we going to be all right. Well, uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what, all those selections, they, they were real cute, but you don't need an MVP mulligan when you hit your drive 390 yards right off the tee box. Will Derek Carr throw three picks in a game again this year? Yes. No. Will he do more to incorporate <laughs> Waller, Renfro, Jacobs into that offense? Yes. And then uh, will he be the first Raider MVP since Rich Gannon in 02? A double yes. So go ahead. 
plus 2300 feeling pretty good about that return on investment game raider nation stand up come on james all right your boy there now all right uh question now is should you pick up any of those guys as mvp candidates for your daily fantasy team head to fanduel.com to check out a bunch of dfs contests where you can win thousands of dollars just by starting the right players and of course the key here is getting value at each position jim sonis is a senior writer and analyst for number fire he's got his best value plays for week two. What's up, Jim? Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, week two is my favorite week for DFS because we get some actual data to look at, but also salary's not quite efficient just yet. And that leaves us with Christian Kirk checking in at $6,500, one of our top values for this week. 12 targets in his Jaguars debut. He had two deep targets, three in the red zone. The Jags very pass heavy in week one. I expect a lot of that in week two as well. I also like Jeff Wilson Jr. checking in here in place of Elijah Mitchell. We saw Wilson without Mitchell last year, and in those games, he had a pretty decent role, got some work in the pass game a lot of work inside the red zone $6,300 here against Seattle that's enough for us to buy into Wilson at a bargain salary my preferred value for this week though is Daryl Henderson at $6,200 facing off with Atlanta Henderson great role last week 82% snap rate the team showed they don't trust Cam Akers just yet and Henderson took advantage facing the Falcons here good spot for him Henderson 62 I think is well worth our attention well worth our trust and a guy we can build around regardless of the contest format we may get more value to pop up during the week but Lisa all three of those guys in really good spots and guys I think we should trust in week number two awesome stuff as always Jim set your lineups at FanDuel.com of course follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Saunas and check out his covering the spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts of course Jim will be back with us a little later in the show to reveal his week two DFS studs thank you Jim all right we stacked your rock stirs we've picked your biggest games uh coming up we're pitting our experts against our ex player experts ex player uh, these guys going head to head giving picks for their favorite week two matchups who do they have their eyes on? You gotta stay tuned to find out. That is next. Coming right back. Happy week two, everybody. Thanks for kicking it with us. Yes, you're in the right place. FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win rolls on. Time for our expert versus X player face off. Each of our betting experts will debate a game with our new teammate here in James Jones, nine year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ, you know, just in case you didn't know that. Uh, maybe they'll agree, maybe they'll get heated up in here. There's only one way to find out, and we're going to get right to it right now. We're starting our expert versus ex player battle with a West mm -hmm. Coast showdown here. Mm -hmm. Arizona at Las Vegas. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. Raiders, five and a half point home favorites. Dave. Who do you like here? There's actually been too much agreeing. We're all like picking the same team. Yeah, so I'm hoping we're, we're smart. different we're here. Smart. <laughs> I just profusely refuse to believe that the Cardinals are as bad as we saw them last week when they got mm. completely blown out by the Chiefs. Week number two always is the biggest overreaction week. And I think that the Raiders have no business being a five and a half point favorite in this game. Look, uh, Cliff Kingsbury on the road. He's a very good coach. We saw what they did last year. They were the best road team. He's six and one on the road against the spread against non-conference opponents. So he's going to bring some tricks. He's going to fool a Raiders defense that's very good, I must say, at being fooled. I think the Raiders are going to give up a lot of points here. Cardinals bounce back. Give me the Cardinals. And James, I hope you're picking the Raiders because mm. I'm tired of agreeing with you. Well, you already know we are not agreeing on this one right here. Okay. Listen, I'm not a big overreactor from week one. But I'm overreacting on this one. The Arizona Cardinals look bad in every phase of the game. Special teams, defense, offense, they were not a good football team week one. And it doesn't look like it's going to change. I don't see anybody. Chandler Jones is on the other side. He's not coming off that edge. They could not get after the passer. They could not score points. And I know the Kansas City Chiefs going to be a pretty good football team. But the Arizona Cardinals, man, they looked bad in that game I got the Las Vegas Raiders in this one right here at home Devontae Adams coming out the tunnel first home game 35 21 Raiders Raiders check the tape all right <laughs> Cole you're our expert for the next game here we got Tampa Bay at New Orleans getting right to it Bucks coming off a pretty straightforward 19-3 win in Dallas New Orleans won 27-26 on that last second field goal capped a 16 point fourth quarter comeback by the way I told you week one was nuts Cole, the Bucks, two and a half point road favorites in this NFC rivalry game. Do you like that number? 
Luis, I'll tell you what, James is my guy, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to trust his opinion here because this is the same dude who uh, uh, listened to this reaction. He said, uh, Drew Brees, he just doesn't do anything special. You saw it, oh. Reggie and MJD and I were like, oh, what? Uh, but the Drew Brees isn't walking through that door, but guess what? Jameis Winston is, but uh, the last year before he went down to injury, five and two, picked up where he left off. We saw what he was able to do last week, but hold on a second. Tom Brady versus New Orleans, four and five in his career. So you know he's going to want to close things out with a victory or two to get above 500. Plus, Tampa looked good on Sunday Night Football. And uh, winners, they never bet against winners. So I'm not going against Tom. Bucks here, 27-21 game. All right, James, your take? Come on, Cole. Do you know that Tom Brady, since he's put on this Tampa Bay Buccaneers <laughs> uniform, other than that playoff game, it's 0-4 against these New Orleans Saints. These New Orleans Saints know how to play Tom Brady. This defense gets after Tom Brady every year he's been in Tampa Bay. He has not figured out how to solve this New Orleans defense, and it is going to be the same thing. You've seen how they looked against the Cowboys defense, settling for field goal after field goal after field goal. You needed a great catch to score a touchdown. Hey. Them Saints is coming for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yeah. again, Cole. Again, <laughs> hopefully we get another picture of this because you are wrong in this one. I'm taking New Orleans in this one. 28, 24, New Orleans. They, they found Mike Evans plus 700 <laughs> first touchdown score. It's almost like somebody called that last mm -hmm. week. Hey, you see, you see one that. three flexing on that screen too. He's oh, back. Oh, Tampa in trouble. <laughs> There it is. That's the fire I'm here for, by the way. Uh, all right, y'all. Pony taps for Cole. Uh, tapping in for Cole here for our next game. We got New England at Pittsburgh. The Patriots offense struggled against the Dolphins. Just seven points there in week one. Meanwhile, Steelers will be without reigning defensive player of the year. TJ Watt hurt his pectoral muscle last week. He's out. Pony, you're in Pittsburgh. Steelers, two and a half point home underdogs. Well, that line's just vicious because of how bad New England's offense was against Miami. We've got Matt Patricia and Joe Judge calling plays. I don't know what Bill Belichick's doing. He's lost his fastball with that decision, if you ask me. But uh, I just don't know what to expect from the Steelers without Watt. He's the second best defensive player in the entire NFL behind Aaron Donald. When he didn't play or left a game early last year, uh, the Steelers were 0-4-1. They did not win a game. We have not seen them win without Watt in his career. So I'm going to take New England. Patriots paranoia still lives in Pittsburgh, and I think New England comes here and gets it done. Defenses always start off faster than offenses. And this Pittsburgh defense started off on the right track against JoJo Burrow, giving him fits. They are going to give mac and cheese fits all game long. I cannot go against Coach Tomlin. When you buy your team black Air Force Ones, that's letting everybody know we are about to put in work. And they are going to put in work again this Sunday. I like Pittsburgh in this one right here. I'm just not a fan of Bill Belichick and these Patriots. I don't know what they got going on. And I was asking my guy Dave over here, when's the last time Coach Belichick started 0-2 with the Patriots? I don't know, but it's about to happen this year. I got Pittsburgh in this this one, 21-17. Yeah, business in mm. that Pittsburgh locker room with those black Air Force ones. You saw his face, too, when he revealed <laughs> yeah. it. He was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. All work. Great stuff, guys. <laughs> We're going to find out Sunday who knows more here, our experts or our ex-player here. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook now to pick your sides and place your bets. Pulling a hard left here, shifted our focus to our weekly confidence competition here, between Dave and Pony. On last week's show, I gave you guys uh, 100 virtual dollars, asked each of you to spend that on uh, on the one money line, one spread, one total. It's a hard to beat a guy that goes three for three. Dave, Ooh. boom, crushing life, taking home more than $83 on your $100 Let's go. virtual Dave. dollar. That, that's a pretty good week, my friends. Yeah, made $11.11 11 on uh, the Chargers. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so winner's up first. Well, that's, that's your week one. Um, let's get your week two picks here. Reminder, 100 virtual dollars to take one spread, one money line, one total here for this week. Dave, what you got? Yeah, I'm going to use that same format as far as $60 on my best bet, who are the uh, the Baltimore Ravens, who I think are going to smash the Dolphins. Again, that, that line, just a little bit over three. Sometimes it's hard to lay, but when they win by 30, it's not. So $60 on the Ravens to cover against the Dolphins. My money line, I'm going to take a slight plus money 
James called it. Look, the Saints own the Bucs. Not only had they beat Tom Brady in four straight, but they've also won seven times in a row in the regular season over the Tampa Bay Bucks. They'll do that again. And my total for $20 is going to be Seattle, San Francisco. Eight straight games between these two teams where they've scored at least 47 points. I think Trey Lance and, and Geno Smith can make that happen. And here I'm going to go over the 42 and a half. I'm going to start with the Titans to keep it closer than the odds makers think against the Bills on Monday night. Uh, believe it or not, Ryan Tannehill played well uh, against the Giants, even in a home loss, 266 yards, no turnovers, a couple touchdowns. I think that line's inflated as an overreaction to the way the Bills stopped a mud hole in L.A. opening night. So give me Tennessee. These games are usually close between these two teams. My next bet, I'm going to take the Jets and Joe Flacco, in Cleveland to beat the Browns. Jacoby Brissett averaged four yards in attempt against the Carolina. He was probably the worst quarterback that played in week one. He got away with a fake spike that should have been a, a delay a game penalty. They should have lost. The refs aired. I think the Jets deep defense actually pretty good against the Ravens run game and they're going to need it to be uh, stout against the Browns running back. So I'm taking the Jets in an upset special for 30 and then 40 bucks on the Falcons and Rams to go over. Atlanta gave up 27 at home to New Orleans. Jameis, no turnovers. They don't get after the quarterback. More time for Stafford. They will right the wrong from week one and score more than 10 points. That game's going over for 40. 40. Jameis is just resilient. He just keeps on coming. Uh, all right, some interesting strategies there, but we'll see which one is the best after this weekend. And we will air the results on next week's show, of course, because you know how much I love accountability time. Um, all right, love me some fierce uh, competition as well. We've got more ahead coming up. We're shouting out our betting markets, but are we giving the locals all the love? You're going to find out next. Plus, James gives us his two uh, money line money makers. Hear which two underdogs he thinks will win outright and why. More ways to win. Stay put. Thanks for hanging with us here on More Ways to Win. Yes, quick pick, shouting out some of our betting markets with rapid fire predictions. Giddy up right into it, guys. You know the drill. I give you the line, you give me your pick in 15 seconds or less. Dave, let's start with the Jets at Cleveland. Browns giving six and a half points here. That's fine. You know, Joe Flacco has not won a game as an NFL starter since uh, 2019. Pony can pick him. I'm not. By the way, Flacco threw the ball 59 times last week. His arm might fall off in this game. This guy can't throw the ball. <laughs> 60 times and then have a good week the next week. No, give me the Browns. Pony 1 0 Washington at 0 1 Detroit Commanders. Carson Wentz 313 yards, four touchdown passes. The Lions are favored by one and a half. Yeah, he also threw interceptions on back to back plays and got away with it because the Jaguars have now lost 18 road games in a row. Detroit put 35 on Philly, a really good team. The Lions even their record go one and one in cover. Yeah, keep that home field too. Cole, the Giants, Saquon Barkley, 232 total yards last week. Yeah. Uh, Saquon's quads are back. Do the G-Men and get it done against Carolina. New York, a one and a half point home favorite. Well, I need to see that in back-to-back -back games from Saquon. And uh, when it comes to that Giants defense, they're not going to have that contained Derrick Henry kind of day again. And Christian McCaffrey, he's not going to fall flat like he did last week. Cleveland's defense, Gave Carolina's problems, but Baker Mayfield, I think he's going to go up-tempo, incorporate Robbie Anderson, and little sweet Chris McCaffrey. Panthers, they win this one, 28-17. All right, Dave. Indy tied Houston last week. This week, they're in Jacksonville. Colts, four-and-a-half-point road favorites. Colts have struggled against Jacksonville. Since Frank Reich took over as a head coach in 2018 of the Colts, he's only covered one time against the Jags and lost as a favorite outright four times. I'm taking the Jags. Okay, Pony, back to you. Texans and Broncos face off in Denver. Broncos giving nine and a half even after last week's Monday Night Football loss in Seattle. Yeah, and they should be. I mean, they left so many points on the board with red zone mistakes. And then what happened at the end of the game, obviously, with Nathaniel Hackett, you added up probably more than two touchdowns worth of points. So they'll blow out a Houston team that after a big lead did next to nothing against the Colts for more than a half. All right, Cole, you're in Chicago. Bears celebrating that week one win over the Niners, yep. but they head to Green Bay this week. They are nine and a half point underdogs. 
Yeah, Justin Fields, we saw him not able to complete a pass in the first half to a tight end or wide receiver. He made an about face in the second stanza, but uh, the game being about adjustments, that's what we're going to see Aaron Rodgers do after his team went 0-1. I think they're going to be able to bounce back, especially in front of a national audience. It's going to be a close one. 24-23 Packers get the dub. Ooh, I like it. All right, finally, Dave, Tennessee heads to Buffalo taking on the Bills, who absolutely dismantled the defending Super Bowl champion Rams. Buffalo giving 9 and a half here. That's way too high of a line. Mike Vrabel, coach of the Tennessee Titans, has been an underdog by nine or more twice in his career. Not only has he covered both those games, he has won those games outright. He loves this underdog role. I think the Titans are going to show up. Derrick Henry last year against the Bills ran him over for three touchdowns and 143 yards. I think he can do it again. Give me the upset. Okay, I like it. From quick picks to upset alerts, we're back on the money line and dropping money line money makers for you right now. We're giving them the bet emoji treatment, of course. Uh, James, you're on the hot seat here. I'm going to ask you to give me your underdog that is going to win outright this weekend. And the guys will either crush you or love you based on their emoji reactions. So let's get right to it. Uh, give me your first pick here. Yeah. Well, they're, they're going to they're gonna love me on this one right here because, I mean, they already agree with me. The, the, the New Orleans Saints are going to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They own Tom Brady. It's not too many people that can say they own Tom Brady. I mean, they held Tom Brady to a goose egg. This defense is not playing any games with Tom Brady. They get after him. They put pressure on him. They get him off the spot. Those DBs on the outside challenge those receivers, and they make it hard on them, making Tom Brady throw tough, contested throws. And then Jameis Winston not turning the ball over. You see my man Mike Thomas flexing in the screen you got Jarvis Juice Landry over there I could keep going on and on and on but the show gonna be over I got Tampa Bay losing this game to New Orleans cash that plus 120 yeah. oh, Cole. Oh, Cole, I don't know if we have, I don't know if we have enough time for me to say why I don't think that that's wow. going down but uh, uh James on the clock man I, I, I got Tampa come on that's that, that's what it is next week is gonna be fun hey, hey James you won a Super Bowl you've led the yeah. league in receiving touchdowns have you ever seen a grown-ass man hold up a poop emoji <laughs> no. No. Come on, Cole. Yeah. And, and, and an hourglass uh, like right, James, through the hourglass. Like, yeah, <laughs> the hands of time. Uh, all right, second pick. What's their upset? My second pick. Listen, everybody listen to me, all right? Don't panic right now if you are the Dallas Cowboys. Cooper Rush is coming in this thing. Cooper Rush came in this thing last year and took them Cowboys over the Minnesota Vikings for a win and played very, very well. He is going to do it again. He came in in garbage time, but he was moving the ball better than Dak Prescott was moving the ball. Hitting these receivers, letting these receivers make some plays. I think this running game will show up. I think Micah Parsons and this defense will show up. I don't see quick fixes over there for JoJo Burrow in this offense and those turnovers. I think Cowboys defense will find a way to get a couple takeaways, put Cooper Rush in some short fields. Cowboys win this one at home in the upset. The fighting Cooper yeah. Rush Cowboys. <laughs> okay. Both of y'all giving me the confused okay. face. Po oh, okay. Pony, not, not so sure about that one, huh? Well, I like, I like them getting the points, but this is an example of you're going too far to win the game outright. The Bengals are going to start 0-2. I don't know about that. Mm. Yeah, mm. like like uh, Cl like Cleo McDowell told Akeem <laughs> Jofer, James, if you want to keep working here, you might have to stay off the drugs, man, because I don't see that one coming oh, to my. fruition. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, this well, is if, if you That's all agree with James, you can hop on your phone right there, the app sitting there staring you in the face, FanDuel Sportsbook app now. Get that plus money before kickoffs roll up on Sunday. Lots more of this ahead. Coming up, Week 1 Fantasy Studs. Our DFS expert reveals which high-priced players you have to have in your lineup. Just, just shell out for them, all right? Plus, updated Super Bowl picks after the Week 1 games. We're taking long shots here. We're talking plus money, and our guys think there's value in betting it right now. And we're coming right back. Just a quick break. All right, coming back with fashionably late takes on the rest of the matchups here on Week 2 Slate. Uh, we're getting right to it. Atlanta is here in L.A. to take on the Rams. Both teams coming off that Week 1 loss. Rams 10.5 point favorites here. It is the biggest spread of the week. Pony, you're going to start us off. Well, and it should be because the, the Falcons don't dress Josh Allen and Von Miller. So those two guys <laughs> roughed up the Rams. That won't happen again. Marcus Mariota struggled in week one. I like L.A. big. 
Pony, I absolutely agree. L.A. is going to bounce back big in this one right here. You are going to see Aaron Donald make a bunch of plays. Cooper Cup is going to get in this action. Matthew Stafford will play well. I think they get their shiny new toy and Mr. Robinson some action in this ball game as well. I think this is going to be a big time blowout. I got a 40 burger for the Rams in this one. 40 to 17 Rams. All right, I'm excited about this one. How about the Seahawks at San Francisco division game here? They roll me off, but I ain't right back, though. Yes, yes Geno I Smith like and that. the Seahawks <laughs> pulling off the upset of the Broncos at home there on Monday night while the Niners lost as road favorites in Chicago. Uh, Dave, the Niners are giving eight and a half in this matchup. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You know, I, I think that the Niners could put up 40. Debo Samuel, seven catches a game, 123 yards, average against Seattle, and that Seahawks bubble is going to burst a lot of emotions <laughs> trying to beat Russell now they go on the road here and take on the Niners who Cole they couldn't get it done in that slip and slide field in Chicago but the weather conditions are going to be much better this time around yeah Dave I would like to say I agree with you but I don't because as much as I want to blame Seattle's Monday Night Football win on Nathaniel Hackett's mismanagement you have to really go out there and tip your cap to Geno Smith yep. night 195 yards uh, and two touchdowns and most importantly zero interceptions you played a clean game and you flip the coin and look at that Niners loss to Chicago you want to blame mother nature there but they didn't do themselves any favors 12 penalties for 99 yards and uh, I'd see Noah Fant and Tyler Lockett combined for a whole bunch more than six combined catches and uh there's a bunch of quarterback controversy going on or maybe there isn't in San Francisco so I like Seattle this one 20 to 13 Geno Smith he's got the pen and paper out I'll tell you what, Geno Smith, by the way, 94% completion rate in that first half. Everybody's like, wait, whoa, I'm sorry, Geno? That's what you get when you draft Geno. All right, uh, yeah. we're back dropping Fantasy Dimes because FanDuel offers a bunch of DFS contests where you can win thousands of dollars by starting the right players. So right now we're bringing you ringers well worth their high price tag. Jim Sonis back with the goods here. Who's on your can't-miss list here in week two, Jim? Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I'm glad we had those values we discussed earlier on because there are some really good studs on this slate despite having no Chiefs and no Chargers to pick from. That begins at tight end with Mark Andrews coming in at $7,400. And we didn't see Andrews erupt in the opener, but he did lead the team with seven targets. His salary has come down $500 this week. He's facing the Dolphins. I think that's kind of a sneaky, fun game. So Andrews is a key target at tight end for this week. At wide receiver, I love Devontae Adams, $8,800, a massive role in his Raiders debut. 17 targets there. Facing off with the Cardinals, that game has the highest total on the slate. Decently tight spread. Devontae Adams will be a fixture within tournament and cash game lineups for this week. At running back, I like Joe Mixon. That's not to, to speak ill of Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor. I just love the workload we got from Mixon, and his salary is too low at $8,300. Mixon had a career high nine targets in week number one. Facing the Cowboys here, I'm expecting the Bengals offense to bounce back in the spot. Mixon likely to be a big part of that. So again, try to get to guys like McCaffrey, Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, but Joe Mixon undersalaried your $8,300. Those guys will be well worth their salary this week, Lisa. And given the value options, I think we can jam them in. So it should be pretty fun. Week number two on FanDuel. My man, set your lineups, FanDuel.com. Follow Jim, of course, on Twitter at Jim Sonis. And another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All right, y'all, you've been warned. This is where the show just kind of goes off the rails. Your reward for, of course, week one trauma and hanging with us for this whole hour. Coming up next, updated Super Bowl picks. And we're leaning heavy into value in this market. Where are the guys thrown down? You're going to have to stick around to find out. We're coming right back. FanDuel TV here wrapping up with the hard-hitting stuff. Updated Super Bowl picks right now. Uh, coming up in just a moment. First, we have to get to those division winners. Guys, I'm going to go around the horn. You each give me one team that's not a favorite right now that can win this division. Dave, no chalk. Who you got? No, nah, this is a pretty big price. The New York Giants at plus 550. Ooh. I mean, here's a team that has a pretty easy schedule. You know, they're going to be favored against Carolina. They have the Cowboys next week, then the Bears. Then there's a, a string in the middle of the season where they have some really bad teams. The Jags, Seahawks. Texas Lions. This team that could be eight and two. Danny Dimes, the new coaching, really making him shine. Give me the Giants. Well, my teams that are my team that I'm about to pick, they they schedule's not that easy. But I'm still going with them because I believe in them. Raiders. I got. 
got the Las Vegas Raiders. I think they are going to find their identity and they are going to be a really good football team. That defense is going to get going. I got the Raiders winning the division. Yeah, I know Patty Mahomes over there. I know Justin Herbert over there. I know Dangerous over there, but I got the Raiders. Yeah, so I'm going to take a team in the worst division in the NFL. That's the AFC South. Give me Jacksonville. Uh, Tennessee lost a home game. The Colts and Texans tied. I think Lawrence has the most upside, and Trayvon Walker had a great opening game as the number one pick. So give me Jacksonville out of nowhere. Yeah, I like that. And, when, you know, when I come to my pick, I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings because uh, a lot of people right now selling them short. You got, you got them at plus 130, but with the way Jefferson's playing along with Kirk Cousins and uh, Kevin O'Connell, I mean, the new blood in Minnesota, I think it could be a land of 10,000 lakes uh, party when it comes to that division title. Ooh, that man. This is my last day on the show, man. You picking the mic. First and last. I said no chop. You all came through. I want to get to the Super Bowl pick. So let's get right to it, guys. Who is going to win at the Super Bowl? And Dave, can you find us some value? Let's I think get the, Dave right up here. I think the Chargers are still value. They were 14-1. They were to 1, Now they're 13-1. to 1. I'll stick with Justin Herbert. Take them all the way. Whenever you see that G up there, you already know where I'm going. I'm going with AR-12 and the Green Bay Packers. You can't just that take simple. all your former teams. You know, Come on, man. They paid the bills. They paid the bills. I think Miami's way too low based on how they looked in week one with a rookie head coach. I mean, to blow out New England the way that they did, look out for Miami. Well, if you don't like making money, then uh, stay away from who I'm picking. I'm going with the Raiders, James, because you just lost all your Oakland and Bay Area privileges at plus 4,400. <laughs> I already told you how I feel about Derek Carr bringing home the MVP. I don't need a mulligan on this one. I'm going to Raiders. They're getting Raiders. it done. And we're paying your bills now. You, know you don't need to root for the hey. Packers anymore. You know, hey, I, I, Packers in my blood. Hey, I just picked the Raiders to win the division. You know, I'm with you, Cole. All right, boys. Uh, hold up for all you at home. That's not all FanDuel has for you. In addition to cashing in on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, you can also have fun and make some easy money playing a new free game on the FanDuel Casino app. It's the reward machine daily free to play game that gives players a chance to win up to 2000 bucks. It's the FanDuel Casino app, and that'll do it for us. Thanks for watching us here on More Ways to Win. We'll see you right back here next week.